Okay, I'm, I'm now inside um, a truck, a pickup truck, and I'm with Lindsay Smith, and we're on our way to the airport, and I'm feeling a mixture of um, excitement and sadness. Um, excited to be visiting Taiwan, but also sad to be leaving Australia. Lindsay, I'm very intrigued, I'm very interested in your work and um, in what you do as a host on Warm Showers. Um, first, can you tell us about your work and what you do? Um, I'm an engineer in the Navy, so um, a chief engineer um, on our warships. Uh, well, primary used to be on our warships. Um, I joined the Navy as a young rating and then as a tradesman already, but then received more training mm -hmm. and then progressed through to the, um, the position I'm at now. I suppose the equivalent in like the American Navy, but my role on the ship would be like the Master Chief. Okay. So the Chief in charge of the boat. So in the engine department on the ship, so I had a ship of, you know, a hundred people. Yeah. There'd be like three people above me, engineering wise. There would normally be like your engineer, your deputy engineer. Okay. And they, um, they're actually commissioned officers, but I'm not a commissioned officer, I'm a, an NCO, so non-commissioned officer. Okay. So. I don't get saluted, but there's a common analogy in the in the Navy that my rank, which is a Chief Petty Officer, they say Chiefs run the Navy. Yeah, all right. So the biggest, um, I suppose, change that I experienced in the Navy was when I was a Petty Officer, which is one rank below me, mm -hmm. I could walk across Garden Island in the middle of the day and pass a hundred people, and maybe half a dozen might say hello or acknowledge me. When I got promoted to Chief, I walked across Garden Island and out of those 100 people, 100 people would acknowledge me from the lowest rank in the Navy to the highest rank. Um, okay. So there's just that respect where they say the Chiefs run the Navy, so. You're now, uh, am I right in saying you're 55 now, is that right? 50, I'll be 54 in August. 54, okay. and. You um, joined the Navy um, at 20, 19, 20, so 34, okay. 35 years service. Right. And can you tell us what um, Garden Island is? We were there, of course, yesterday, and, uh, but can you just describe what Garden Island is? Uh, Garden Island is the chief naval base on the eastern seaboard, and there's actually a Garden Island in Western Australia as well. So there was an island over there that was converted into a Navy base as well, so we've got Garden Island East and Garden Island West. The one on the east where we were is HMAS Cuttable, Her Majesty's Australian ship Cuttable. The one in the west is Her Majesty's Australian ship Sterling. They okay. both have huge big dry docks able to do major ship repairs, do anything up to uh, light aircraft carriers. Right, okay, very good. And, uh, but, but it's no longer an island, it's now yeah. attached to the mainland. It's a, the, one in, the one in Western Australia is still an island with a about a four kilometre concourse going out to a bridge going out to it. Um, but the one in Sydney uh, in the 1930s, uh, the island was connected to the, the har some of the harbour was reclaimed, I suppose, um, and a huge dry dock was put in and roads and buildings and all that stuff. So essentially, it's not an island anymore where it once was. And it's also significant that it's the, where the first graffiti by white men in Australia was, where some convicts chiselled out from the first fleet in 1788, chiselled out their initials on a rock. That's right. Which we saw yesterday. The date too, like or the year. Yeah. The other thing is, I remember you're showing me your medals and your badges, and you're explaining what they were yep. for. Um, do you mind telling us again and what they're for? And uh, I suppose I got two. Um, I suppose service badges, which are just <laughs> time badges, so I've got one medal that I earned when I completed my first six years of service, um, and that's for sort of like anyone who completes their initial sign-on period, so if you sign in for four years, you get up to four years, if you sign on for six, you get up to six years. Then okay. I've got my um, defence service medal, which I've got after 15 years. 
and then after every five years after that you get a little bar to go across it okay um after that and i'm doing them in so i suppose seniority from lowest to highest in priority and then right. uh i've got the humanitarian aid medal which i earned when my ship went to um banda arche for the tsunami uh that hit on Boxing Day 2004, so we left on Christmas Eve 2004 to go up and um, assist Indonesia. Um, you know, hundreds of people were killed when the tsunami hit. So we went up for that, um, and then we left. And then it got the same area, got hit by an earthquake, and we went back again. And that's when we lost nine of our family when Shark 02 crashed. Um, so I earned the humanitarian aid medal there. Um, that was a helicopter, is that right? Yeah. Okay. So sharks, it was a Sea King helicopter because Shark, all the Sea Kings of that squadron had the Shark moniker okay. and their number. So, you know, we had, on that deployment, we had Shark 02, which was the one that crashed, and then we had, I think we had Shark 07, was the other Sea King. Um, then I have um, another medal, I'm not actually sure sitting here, I'm not actually sure of the title of it, but it's like Australian, oh, it's the Australian Service Medal, um, which was uh, earned whilst I was up in Northern Australia, and we had a, I suppose, a large refugee problem uh, in the early 2000s where lots of boats are coming out from Indonesia full of refugees, and often they'd come close to us and then they'd set the boats on fire or they'd sink them so we had to take them and bring them to Australia as refugees so I got the medal for that um, okay. then there's another service medal which I got for a operational deployment in a non-warlike situation uh, then next to that I've got my three I suppose three of my four active service medals. So we get, uh, I've earned the Australian Active Service Medal three times for um, being deployed into a war zone. So I went to um, Timor, Iraq, and Afghanistan. <coughs> and. Uh, the Australian Active Service Medal and the Australian Service Medal are very, very similar, but the Active Service Medal has a red stripe down the middle which signifies blood and the loss of life. And the uh, three medals next to that are the campaign medals for those that conflict, those three conflicts. So the Australian Active Service Medal, you only get awarded at once and then you get a bar okay. for each thing, but then you have the campaign medal. So and they again go in order of when you earned them. So the um, the East Timorese one, and then the Iraq one, and then the Afghanistan. And then I also wear a meritorious unit citation, which I earned in 2003 in uh, Afghanistan. charge badge and my sea service badge which just charge badge just signifies that I'm a charge qualified chief so I've done a uh, engineering board which lasts for about three or four hours in front of senior navy engineers that smash you with questions mm -hmm. okay. to see whether you're capable of doing the job and then okay. the other one is just a sea service badge which just signifies how long I've done a sea on ships which is about 24 years out of my 35 years in the Navy. Okay. I understand you went to Afghanistan twice, is that right? Yeah. Okay, how did you feel about having to go back a second time? Um, just part of the job, really. You, okay. You're nervous. You're nervous when you go away and you don't know. You actually leave before you've left. Start to, you start to shut down from family and friends. You start preparing and thinking ahead, and you go into a bit of a shell, 
Well, that's what I do. Okay. Some other people rank differently, but I, my family always said I left before I... Okay. I left mentally before I left physically. And then once you get over there, you just get into your zone, rely on the people around you and, All right. and do your job. Okay. And do you mind telling us about um, some of the ships you've worked on? Or um, here's a kind of thing. So, my first ship uh, in order of service, I served on HMAS Yarra. HMAS Jarvis Bay, HMAS Storwood, HMAS Parramatta, back onto Jarvis Bay again, then I was sent to the United States and I served on uh, a ship called USS Saginaw, um, then sailed her back around the world. Then served on uh, Her Majesty's Australian ship Canimbla, then Manura. Um, so no Canimbla, then HMAS Tobruk, then HMAS Manura. Okay. Um, and then back on the Canimbla again. Um, so I did virtually 11 years straight on Canimbla and Manura, they're the same ship. I was actually sent to Canimbla for 11 years straight. And they released me a couple of times to go to Manura to train up their engineers. Then, um, 2005, after we went to Banda Arche and we lost Shark Zero Two, I came back and I went to an, uh, an organisation called Sea Training Group, which trained our engineers. Okay. And then I. Uh, Realised I didn't want to do the job anymore and I was going to get out. Then I got a, offered the job on Australia's SAR training ship, the Young Endeavour. Where I, and then from 2007 I was diagnosed with cancer and end of 2015 I helped run a youth development program on a tall ship. I find that fascinating and what a difference in your uh, job roles. Where did you guys sail to? Uh, mainly around Australia on 11 day voyages. Okay. We won, um, we used to, a lot of the tall ship programs around the world are actually based on Young Endeavours program. We were sort of like, a lot of businesses and used our model as their model and we were sort of like the McDonald's of the, the tall ship world in that we had this program that worked and it went, we knew what to do and it was just okay. all the other you know, like you see McDonald's is, whether we like McDonald's or not, they're an amazing company that yeah. um, tried and tested and tried and tested and, and a lot of other companies model their programs on McDonald's and we were the same with our tour ship program. And how many people how many people get involved in that? Like, uh, we have nine staff on the voyage at any one time uh -huh. and only one engineer, so I was the charge on board and then I had my second engineer and we used to take it in turns going on voyages. And then we'd have 24 youth, so in the age bracket of 16 to 23. Okay. So I did a couple Brilliant. of circumnavigations of Australia. And in 2015, I sailed it around the world. Fantastic. And how long did that journey take? Uh, 12 months. 12 months. Uh, okay. We left Sydney on the 22nd of December. And we got to Perth on the 23rd of December the next year. Oh, 
from everywhere, um, none from the same postcode, so they don't know it, none of them know each other. But some companies do have the facility to sponsor their people to come on board, so the ship will do 20 voyages a year. The Commonwealth Bank puts one of its junior managers on every voyage, and they right. pay for that privilege. Um, Hungry Jacks puts a junior manager on every voyage. John Holland Group puts a junior manager on every second voyage or something. All right, and how about um, some of the other ships that you worked on? Like, can you tell us what kind of ships they were and like what sizes they were? Um, the destroyer escort, the Type 12, was a Leander class. They were, you know, 3,000 ton, okay. up to eight and a half thousand ton for Canimbla and Manura, and the others were sort of like a little bit in between. But I started out on sort of warships earlier, although they're all classed as warships. I started out on sort of fighting ships, I suppose, destroyer escorts. Mm -hmm. And then ended up on what we call fat ships. So, um, like supply ships that deploy troops. Okay. Stuff like that. So. Okay. Did, uh, a lot of the, did all the fighting ships, would they have, I don't know what it's called, but equipment to detect fine yep. submarines? Yep. Okay. The war, well the fat ships at the end didn't, but the obviously the destroyer escort did because they were sub hunters. That okay. was their role. So okay. yeah, normally the way a navy fights is you have the aircraft carrier and then out in front of the aircraft carrier you've got the destroyers. Okay, they're then protecting got, the aircraft so carrier? So they protect the aircraft carrier, then you got the frigates out in front of that which are protecting them. And then you got the destroyer escorts, which are out in front of that, protecting them. So you've got a okay. a, a screen mm -hmm. where your, your ships essentially get more lethal as they get closer to the aircraft carrier. Okay, and what's a frigate? Is it just um, a smaller just, ship? Just a different class of ship with different different weaponry and missile systems on board. Um, okay. To fight at a different range. All right, and. Um, I understand that uh, the Endeavour is still operating today, it's still... Yep. Okay. Still takes you through. Alright. Just unfortunately I'm not on. And you were saying it's something that you'd like to go back to? Yeah, I want to try and get back on it if I can. Okay, very good. You were saying that you could retire anytime you want, and um, I know um, you're very fond of bicycles. In your home, you have seven bicycles in your living room, which I, is that right? Seven? Yeah, I think it's seven, eight. Yeah. About that. There's like a couple of racers. One, there's two, a Linsky. Three, four, there's five, a, six, I think there's eight. Yeah, and it's quite a collection. There's some titanium frames. There's like a Tour de France bike in there. Um, there's um, a trials bike. Uh, folding bike. A folding bike. A triathlon bike. A triathlon bike, yes. And, um, the triathlon bike, what brand is that again? Sabella. That's right. I it's think they're P Canadian. Are they Canadian? I'm not sure. It's a P3. I was actually yeah. given that bike. You're kidding. I borrowed it off a, a friend, Leonard. I've only ever, I'd only ever, I've never done a triathlon before and I did a half Ironman. Yeah. And he lent me the bike and then when I returned it to him, he said, I'm 65 years old, I'm never going to do a triathlon again. Keep it. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I brought him a couple of beers and that was okay. it. Okay, very nice. And then your Tour de France bike as well. It was one that you acquired. Um, oh, yeah, a that was a, a friend of my partner's gave it to us. She's going to throw it out and gave it to us. BMC. And it has like a full Durace group set on it, which yep. is pretty amazing. Okay. Um, so you're very fond of cycling and you, um, you've done some bicycle touring in the past. Yeah. And you plan on doing some more in the future. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I want to ride on a tour, but I sort of don't know where to start. I don't know what, oh, no, I don't know what to do, but I don't know where to start. I suppose. So okay. I plan on sort of getting out of the navy the end, towards the end of this year, hopefully, unless they offer me a job that I want. But if it's not a job I'm going to enjoy, I'm going to leave. And then my plan is to just ride around Australia a little bit for a couple of months, and uh, I suppose test my equipment, find out what works and what doesn't. And then I'm thinking about going to America in 
March and the 28th of March is the start of the baseball season so I'm thinking of starting in Seattle and um, over six months cycling to every major city that has a baseball stadium okay. and uh, seeing a baseball game in the 30 baseball stadiums so I need to be able to do about Ten and a half thousand miles in six months. So, so there will be a lot of warm showers and slipping wherever I can. And I believe in okay. America, you can, there's churches and groups that'll put you up and all that sort of stuff. So I might have to develop some sort of tolerance to Christianity and that great <laughs> fiction novel called the Bible. Okay. Um, I really admire that you're in a position where you could stay. In you could go on cruises, you could stay at resorts, but that's not what you're choosing to do. You're more interested in traveling as opposed to, you know, doing the tourist thing, which yep. I really admire. And you mentioned warm showers, and warm showers is, of course, a hosting site where people um, can make their homes available to people who travel by bicycle. How many people have you hosted? Um, I've only been involved since, this, well, since Christmas. And I think you're 19, my 19th person. Okay, amazing. And I have to comment on how, like, you're actually driving me to the airport. Like, I think that's going above and beyond in well, terms of helping I'll people. I do it for most people if they want it, if they need it or want it, I or if I can. Yeah. The same as I, you know, I yeah. take take them out for take people out for dinner and yeah, do that sort of stuff. We were at. Uh, a vegetarian restaurant the other day and I was commenting thinking asking if you guys are ninjas because when I went to pay for it you guys had beat me to it and already paid yeah, already done. for the dinner but um, thank you very much that was really nice of you what I don't see okay what, we'll try and I'll pull in here yeah. and we'll try and see what because I don't want you have to drag your bag all the way out the other end yeah. of the where are you going to um, Taiwan Taipei Taipei that's right at 1010 at 2010 yeah and G. You've got good right eyes. I can't believe you saw that. Okay, we're at the airport right now, and uh, our drive is coming to an end here, and I'll have to sign off shortly. Um, but um, what else I find really amazing about what you've done as a host, because um, I arrived and I was in the house for at least three, four, maybe more nights um, before I even met you. You just arranged for me to collect the key and make use of your place you were away but that's not the first time you've done that you've done that no I think I've done it three times four times now yeah which I find amazing so 19 people and sometimes you've had more than one person staying at a time no the most I've had at once is I had four people two different couples so I had a couple in their 60s and a couple in their early 20s which is kind of fun I left them yeah. at the place and I went and stayed at my girlfriend's which is uh, amazing because when I sent a request to stay with you, you had mentioned that there might be a couple of other people staying and that um, you might do the same. So we're now um, pulling over here and I we're think I'll have to sign off. off. Yeah, because it's time to unload. Okay, I'm just getting my bags out of the back of the truck. Um, I'm really grateful I got this lift because I have a huge box. Whoops, that's not my bag. <laughs> okay. And uh, that's it. I've got like one, two, three bags and this big box for my bike. Lindsay, um, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. You've been, uh, you've been awesome. You've been great. That's right. And uh, I do hope um, we'll to see you again, again in somewhere. Ireland, maybe, hopefully. We will. Okay, great. We'll okay, thanks a lot, Lindsay.